G'day crew, welcome back. I'm Todd, this is Toxic Garage Customs, and this is part four of repairing Pandora's torque box in my green XM Falcon. In this episode, we tie it all up. It comes to an end. I'm a happy man. Well, I'm 50% happy, so I've still got the other side to do. Anyway, we located rust. You saw that. We cut rust out. We found more rust. We cut that out. We treated it with acid. We primed it, we painted it. Well, we've installed the torque box. It is done and dusted. And I gotta say, I'm pretty darn happy with it. So in the video, you won't see it painted. I've just put some paint on it just now. So I'll spin around and show you. If you're not aware, black's really hard to film. But anyway, that's it. Still gotta put the dust shield up the side there, but I'm not going to do that just at the moment because I've still got further work to do which you will see in future videos. But there we are, nice and shiny black. I didn't necessarily want it shiny black, but that's what I've painted it with. I'm gonna repaint the entire underside of this car as part of its big birthday. So watch the video, check it out, see what I've done. If you like it, then that's great. If you do, remember to like, comment and share, subscribe before you get to the end of the video. I'll see you at the end. I'm really happy that that's added a heap of strength through there um, on top of what would have been from factory. So I think that's come up really well. What I'm going to do before I put the torque box, on, box in, of course, is do that. But um, I'm going to drill a whole heap of plug welds in it so that I can get it ready. So hopefully this part here is not going to take me too much longer. Just part around the corner here. Famous last words. We'll see. Okay, it's Okay, it's time for this bit. So I'm going to make a template. I'm going to replace this whole piece, including this flange just here. Um, I'll see what's behind there. But um, I'll tackle that when I get to it. Can't really see there at the moment. So what I'm going to do, or what I've done, I've just got this piece of... This is old manila folders, like office folders. Uh, I've just got that, and I've sat it there, that straight edge along there, and then I've thumb printed this up here so where that line is I just basically pushed in there and created a shadow and then I've come to the other side and I've just drawn a sharpie marker around there and I've worked out roughly where the flange would be and I can fold that over and check it but I've just sort of allowed some extra through there so I'm going to cut that out with scissors and then sit it back and see how it looks okay got it cut out Sit it in place. Looks a bit right there. Looks like the same size and shape. So that's good. And, you know, I bought some magnets the other day, which would be perfect for this. Um, okay, so that's there. And then I can just fold this around here and see how it looks. And it looks about right to me. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece of steel, this size and shape. Then I'm going to make it look like that, but without the rust. Then, once I've made it, and I think what I'm going to do is cut down through here. <clears throat> I can't see any reason why it'll be rusted on the other side. Everything that's rusted is just within the torque box, straight outside the torque box, it's all good. So I'm going to cut straight down there and probably down here. And then I can look at, yeah, so I might try and choose this line here, just here and then I will remove it. I'll cut it into pieces basically to remove it and there'll be some plug welds, spot welds. Uh, I can grind those off to access it and then I can look inside the sill extension and go, oh look, more work to do. Or go, woohoo, no more work to do. But either way, I need to make this and I need to cut that off. That's all cut to shape. Sitting in there. So. It sits exactly on the top of the lip where it was before. It sits tightly up against there. And it comes in nicely through here. I'll notch this out and I've got to bend this over and bend this over to match that. And I'll cut the little mouse hole there, just there. And I'll bring it across so it matches that. Now this here, this piece um, was obviously pressed with a hydraulic press when it was manufactured. Now I could beat around the bush and try and get that all to come into one piece. I'm not going to. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to cut a little pie cut out of there, 
I'll tap it over this way, tap it over that way, tap it into shape, weld it and be done with it rather than spend an hour trying to get that shape. It's much easier for me just to pie cut it and bend it over. So what I need to do is I'll pie cut that, I need to bend this at a 90 degree angle this way, 90 degree angle this way and then we can refit it. Now I'm going to be fitting this over the top of what's there. So what's going to happen is it's all going to push forward. It's going to be, this bend will be too far forward by the thickness of the metal. Now I don't mind that because I'm going over the existing. Now, I don't mind that because when I put it in, I can just shorten this edge at the back here up to push it back into place. Let's get into it. So I've got this cut and I've started bending it. So I've got that 90 return on it there. And it will sit like that. So it's sitting quite well there. This bottom lip part, I just need to bend it. I've already started and I'm using a shifter for that. So I'll show you that. Pretty simple stuff really. So what I'm doing is I want to bend to this shape here, so I've just got the shifter. I'm just going around and just grabbing it and lifting it up little by little, and that way I can bend the curve rather than a straight line. So I guess it's as straight as the end as this of the shifter is. It gets a little bit harder on the very narrow bits because the shifter wants to slip off. But I'm just grabbing it, folding it over, and as I'm bending one part, I can feel the next part come up as well, just beside it. But I've created the stretch through the corner in increments rather than in a large bit. So I might just have to hammer that a little bit. But you can see I've got that starting to roll over. And I need about a 90 degree angle. As I said, the, the short bits here are a little bit challenging. So I will need to do a bit of hammer work. But it's getting the basic shape into it for me. So I'll take that over. I'll just shape it up a little bit. Just before I do, let's see how it looks on the car. show you it's not far off really so once I get it onto the the uh, hammer I'll just bend it up a bit it'll be shaped pretty well and then I can just weld that corner there up it's coming together just welded that corner up where I put that pie cut just going to grind it off and you never know the difference and literally that corner welding it and grinding it took three minutes. Um, much easier than trying to shape it. And that will fit in just lovely. So I've started cutting this out and I can remove this now. I've got to release it up here. But I thought I'd just stop here and have a look. Hmm. Look at this. I wonder why they rust out, eh? Look at that. Sill extension. Sills obviously behind it. Wonder why the sills rust out in them. There's an opening in the top just here that seems completely unnecessary. It's at the back of the front wheel. Um, of course stuff's got to end up in there. So I've got some rust in here. The rest of it looks pretty good. Now it goes down to here, so I'm going to replace this part through here. I've given it as good a cleanup as I can inside, which I have to say is pretty good. Um, I'm going to treat it afterwards, so phosphoric acid, etch prime, uh, red primer, and so on. I 
know that I have to do work on the seals. I know there's rust in the seals. Uh, I want to get to this end of the seal extension while I can um, because I won't be able to get to it afterwards. So you can see down the seal there. So I've got down almost as far as the guard bolt, which is just here, just there. So I'm this far away from the end of the seal. So when I go to do the seal, then hopefully I'll be able to get to the upper end as well. But I've got a fair bit of stuff out of there. So um, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to make a piece for this, just a patch. I don't think I'm going to worry about this lip, but I, I'll see. Um, so that I can weld it on and then be done with this. This up here is supposed to be an elongated oval hole. I don't know why it's got that in it, whether it was a weld hole or what it was, but it's staying like that. Up here is not too bad. It's not beautiful, but it's not too bad. Um, I think that hole there is like one of those there. I'm not really sure what it's for. Right, oh, well, we've made really good progress. We've got the sill extension all fabricated. I put a piece in through here and through here and got it all prepped on the back here, ready to go. And then I have the sill extension piece on the back all fabricated and spot weld holes in place. So that will sit like that and then all those spot welds will go into the back of this seam through here and I put this little piece here as well because I didn't want dust and stuff coming in so I'm going to phosphoric acid that and then I'm going to dry it and then I'll spray a heap of primer in there and I think I'll weld it on tomorrow because it's been a very long day okay new day massive day yesterday I'm feeling a bit crook so my voice probably sounds a bit funny so yesterday by the end of the day I finished um, putting some phosphoric acid into the seals and the seal extensions putting some red primer and some weld through primer where I needed to and had it all ready and I had welded no I hadn't I had drilled holes for plug welds so this morning and I've installed that so got this panel made up got my little mouse hole in there you can see the the back of the, the plug welds here onto that sill extension that I repaired and over here you can see a weld that I put down there there was contaminants coming through between the sheets of metal um, so I gave it a, a good clean gave it another weld it's good enough it, it's plenty of strength it just wasn't pretty so there's a lot of stuff volcanoing out of it um, lots of plug welds here that is rock solid, so it's now one piece with the rest of it here. I'm going to seam seal with this stuff. This stuff, I'm going to seam seal everything. Every single joint that I can, everywhere I can get to that is within this torque box. So everything that I can possibly think that is going to capture water or let dirt in or whatever, I'm going to seam seal up so that this doesn't happen again. Um, as you know, everything is primed inside, outside and so on. So seam sealing it, then when I put the torque box on, then I will be pretty happy that I've done the best job I can. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to seam seal it, I'll let that go off and then I'm gonna give the whole thing a coat of black paint. Never gonna be seen, but it'll be black. All sealed up. As I said, everywhere. So I've tried to get it down into areas, into joints like this, just everywhere I possibly can. And over my welds as well, just in case there's any um, pinholes or anything like that. And I've got into the back here as well, same thing, up where I welded. Um, I know it doesn't look pretty, but once it's painted black, it'll look just fine. It won't look any different than anything else you see here. And again, it'll be hidden mostly by the torque box. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to let that set and then I will give it a coat of paint and then I'm going to put this torque box in. Might actually prepare it, drill some um, plug welds and everything, holes, before I uh, get back onto it.
when I had had the uh, torque box sitting up on the car not that long ago, I uh, made some marks on it with a Sharpie marker just to see where the spot welds were. But then I'm also referencing the original panel. Obviously, I'd cut particular sections off the original panel when I was removing it, so I couldn't really see some of the spots. But I'm pretty sure that I've got them all drilled. I've put extra spot welds in as well. The bigger, why not? Um, more welds, more strength. Makes sense to me. So uh, I'll check out the uh, seam sealer, see how that's going. And if it's looking dry, then I'll throw some paint on. If not, I'm going to uh, go back and grind the back of all of these um, holes that I've just drilled because they've got dags there. But I'm also um, going to give it a good scuff up on the back and throw some primer on it. This stuff, I think this paint that's on it is just there to um, prevent it from rusting during transport. So I'll give it a sand back and I will prime it myself. It, it flakes off so it can't be too good. Let's get into that. I've cleaned up all the areas where the uh, plug welds are going to be. So on the outside, so that I get good, good weld contact. And on the inside here, I've just given it a good rough up. I'm not sure if that was epoxy primer or what it was. Some of it was hard to get off, some wasn't. So I've roughed it up. Uh, I'm going to put another coat of primer over the top of that. And then I'll put some um, finish coat over it as well. And then what I've also done is gone through and I've just cleaned any primer or whatever that I'd got onto areas where the spot welds are going to be. So I get a really good clean weld. And I had put some, epox uh, some uh, seam sealer on a couple of spots where I didn't need it or where it was going to be in the way. So I cleaned that off with some wax and grease remover. So it's all pretty much ready to go. Um, seam sealer is still tacky. Um, I may just paint over the top of it anyway. I'm pretty sure that'll be okay. It's uh, primed and it's sealed, so I think another coat of paint's not going to hurt it. And I'll just make sure that I don't paint over these areas again. I could put weld through primer on those areas, but I really don't like the stuff. So uh, it'll just remain as bare metal between the surfaces, unfortunately. I couldn't help myself. I sprayed some weld through primer on the areas where it's going to be welded and um, I've put some black paint. I actually found in my paint cabinet something that my son had bought, which is roll bar and chassis black paint. Apparently doesn't need a primer, so it's got a primer. But um, yeah, it seems to go on quite thick, which is uh, good, serves the purpose. So I'm pretty happy that that area is going to have really good protection. I'll go through and give the... Um, this a coat as well, so I've given that coat of primer on the inside edge. I'll put some of that black paint on it and I'll leave the outside as it is. And I'll worry about that once it's welded in place. It's already black, I can scuff it up, give it a coat of paint. At the end of the day, surface rust on the outside is not really an issue. It's actual structural rust on the inside. Um, just looking after afterwards, I will go through and I'll actually put seam sealer around here. I'm not too worried about completing everything on the sills yet. Uh, I've still got things to do on the mud guards and that, but as I said, I've got to do some work on the sills anyway, so I'm coming back to that area. Very happy with that. I think it will do the job very nicely. Okay, so that looks exactly like it did before I sanded it all back, but now I'm satisfied that it's primed and it's black. Let's get this thing fitted to the car.
I've got that fitting up pretty well. Um, bit of backyard mechanics there. Uh, got a, a, a bottle jack just working like a port of power. Just got it pushed up against the control arm. Don't worry, there's not a lot of pressure on it. It's just to take a bit of spring out of the steel there so that I could get my um, spot welds, my plug welds in contact. No point trying to weld into air, so they've got to be in contact. So I'll weld the ones that I can get contacted and then I'll belt the other ones across with a hammer just to take a little bit of shape, put a bit of shape into the metal to get it in contact. But I'm happy that it's sort of keyed into the, the main areas that I need it to be. Um, seems to fit well across here. So um, yeah, I uh, am ready to start welding this. So I've got full contact across the back there. I've got full contact down the side behind the vice grips there, through here. A little bit of air up the top there that needs to be banged in. It is a little bit short across here. Now this was um, just fillet welded down there originally. So I think I'll just, I'll, I'll get some spots in and then I think I'll bang it across a bit and put some welds and just try and hope that the heat and some belting will bring it across closer. Now, it's pretty good down through here. It's just mainly this area here, just slightly, slightly different shape. And along the rail here, couldn't really ask for much better fit than that. Once that's pushed up, it'll be absolutely fine. Time to weld this thing in. And it would have been really clever of me to replace the handbrake cable before I put this together. And I could still do it, but I just want to get this done. All welded in. So nicely spotted across the back here. Had to uh, put a bead here because uh, the gap was just a little bit wide through there. I did spot it, but I'm not convinced those spots contacted really well. Now uh, these ones here, that hole was here when I bought it. That one I drilled, but there was nothing to weld onto. So I didn't worry about that one. Now up the top here, all good. This here, now I presume that's meant to, meant to be like that. Um, I'll know when I pull the other side apart or if I look at my previous videos. Um, all welded down through there. My firewall, it burned all the paint off. I was checking that out a couple of times, just making sure I didn't have an engine bay fire. And when I was welding across the top here, I was just making sure that my carpet and carpet underlay wasn't on fire <clears throat> because I uh, forgot to peel it back. But that's okay. This is as it was when I pulled it apart, all through like this. Um, that gap was like that as well. I don't know why. I'm going to seam see all that. I think I'd prefer it blocked. <clears throat> Not sure what's supposed to happen with those. I didn't have anything in there, but there may be supposed to be little plastic plugs or something there, because otherwise it's just a place to let stuff in. But overall, I'm very happy with that. I'm going to give some of that a grind up. Um, I'll grind those back, grind some of the more visible ones back and um, then some of these welds I'll leave it as it is and I will go through and I'll throw a coat of paint on it so I'll scuff all this up as well and uh, then this side is done. Then I'll give you my review on this panel. Okay, all ground up. Going to go through and seam seal everything that I possibly can and then give it a coat of paint. But as you can see, all these um, plug welds, ground them back. It'll look close to original once it's done. Um, usually you just have a dimple when you've got a plug weld, uh, got a spot weld. So you know, once it's got some black paint on it, it'd be hard to tell the difference. Now, once again, if you look at these welds here and look at these welds here, and then look at the factory stuff over here, if you can see it, the factory stuff here, I think, uh, mine looks better than the factory stuff. So um, I'm not trying to make it look any different. I'm trying to make it look like it really hasn't been touched too much. 
let's get some sealer on. Seam sealed up within an inch of its life. Okay, so honest review. What do I think of the torque boxes? Well, what I'd have to say is that nothing can be perfect and patch panels are never perfect. But I have to say, as far as this goes, I would give this about a nine, maybe a nine and a half out of 10. I can't give it 10 out of 10 because it wasn't absolutely perfect. But I tell you what, it can't get much closer. So hats off to the company. Uh, really, really good product. I'll put their link in the, in the description of this video. Uh, super happy with that. The, I, I guess the half point, they're 400 and something dollars each or 400 dollars each. Uh, it's a lot of money, but the, the time it saved, the effort was just fantastic. Okay, the job was massive at the end of the day. I think I ended up putting seven or eight individual pieces into this. Um, it's taken me several days. I haven't added the hours up, but it's been a lot of hours um, and I haven't done the other side yet. But that part there, putting that in, took me 30 minutes to put it in at the end um, because all I really had to do was manipulate it a bit with some vice grips and so on. So fully recommend it. That's how you do torque boxes in one of these Falcons. I'm going to do the other side. Probably won't video. It's not really much point. Um, but I will be doing other things on this car. So if you want to see more stuff on XMs, my XM in particular, then um, join me. Come back. So, yeah, I'm, I hope you enjoyed it. And here we are at the end of the video and at the end of the series on replacing Pandora's torque box. What I've got coming up in future episodes is I'm going to be repairing the seals. Where's my finger? I'm going to be repairing the seals. I'm going to be doing some other work. I'll replace the handbrake cable. If you want to see me do that, then you're mad, but I'm happy to film it. And I'm going to be doing a fair few other things as well. There's some love this car needs. Eventually, I'm going to respray it. So, many, many episodes of content for you on my Green XM Falcon, which, by the way, is a pretty talky little 302. So, um, if you want to know more about it, stay tuned, come back, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, stay safe and grab an angle grinder.